We are at Torque Storm headquarters. We are in the shop and we're going to check out some of the machines and they're going to show us around a little bit so we can see exactly how the Torque Storm supercharger gets made. So let's get into it. This is what, what it starts out as a regular thing and it goes through the lathe like this, then it goes into mill and we turn it into this 5 axis mill. Pretty nice and it gets zoomed up on this one. Got a leak here. I was say, I feel something slippery. Yeah. Let's cut it on a 5 axis trunnion. So they're not from China, made right here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. A lot of people can't actually do this because it takes simultaneous five axis work. You don't just tip it and cut it. It's right. all five axis at the same so time. So many angles and stuff on yeah. that. Crazy. <laughs> so that's what it starts out as, is that chunk right there, huh? Well, it starts out as a, this well, a block. Yeah. That comes out of the lathe. So concentric, it has to be concentric and the right diameter within a couple of tenths. It's got to be dang near perfect. Huh. Otherwise, it uh, it won't. It'll blow up. Actually, you won't be able to Ooh. balance it. Yeah. We balanced uh, three gram millimeters, which is super, super tight. Yeah. Well, they're spinning crazy, like well, twenty. Well, we balance 000? them like they would spin a really fast turbo. Actually, we don't spin them as fast as turbo, but we balance them that way. Right. It's, Make, helps longevity on the bearing and stuff. And then brackets start out as a, just a chunk of metal and then we put holes in it and it goes on a fixture and machine it out to the shape, shape it's gotta be in. Thick chunk of billet. Problem is the machine would just shut off and it's supposed to send a text to somebody to come fix it. So yeah, I don't, I don't know if you can see it here, Dylan, but the thing well, is it's a little hard to, but yeah. You can you can make it out. Oh yeah. So that's what they call like what, what is that water jet or something? No, no, it's a mill. It's mill. a hor it's a horizontal mill. And it's on a tombstone, it's not a tombstone. Hard to see it through the water right there, guys, but that is yeah. the uh, cases right there. Getting made. We do everything in lots. We keep track of all the lot numbers and everything. We keep track of all the bearing lot numbers, all that stuff. We make sure we know where all that stuff's at. Covers and uh, covers and pieces. set these cards up and they hold 32 pieces that went out from the pizza. <laughs> this is a job for an automotive company <laughs> make these pallets that wheels go on and then uh, press smashes them down for doing the cladding. You know all the wheels don't have clad on them. It's just a plastic chrome piece on it. And that's that's what these these uh, Pallets will do. It holds the stuff. We got some stuff we mold. We uh, pour silicone and 
into a mold, so we had the shape of the wheel and the robots going on. We did that for two weeks. So how many superchargers can you make out of a rock car? That's what the most of Scott's uh, race car project. I was going to say, that, that's, worth, that's worth good scrap metal right there. Right. Yeah, I mean, make sure they keep it all separate. Yeah. Aluminum and steel and all that. <laughs> yeah, this is all, all built. This is all this road. Heck yeah, guys. Pretty cool to be able to be inside this Torque Storm shop looking at all of their cool gadgets and tools and machines to make all of these superchargers. So, definitely awesome that we got the opportunity while we're up here racing to stop by the shop and actually see how these superchargers get built and the machines it takes to do it not to mention the craftsmanship and can't forget that american quality that they're known for and that's what it's worth right there guys right oh we got the blow off uh so they start out like the that. naked blow off valve it's the naked one, right? Well, that's how they start out, just, to, you know, slabs of round chunks so of billet. So we go from, go from this. Oh, well, yeah. Go from that. My bad. I'm waking up. So the blow-off valve starts off life as a chunk of tube metal, it looks like. And then they end up like this before they get powder-coated black, correct? Yeah, that's got another op to it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I think that op. Look at all the blow-off valves. One of your guys' blow-off valves is out there. Alright, so just maybe I have one or somebody's Hemi blow-off valve that's going to go in their kit here soon. Just know that I touched it first. Oh, into this building, our old building, we didn't have a cafeteria or anything. And so we got a cafeteria now, or not cafeteria, but we got a lunchroom. We never had one before. So oh, let's, we're really proud of our lunchroom. Let's go steal the other Chris's lunch real quick. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, it's kind of equity here, but we built this thing. Oh, y'all love Taco Bell as much as me, I see. What was that? Y'all must love Taco Bell also. Oh my gosh, we Taco Bell are amazing. Taco Bell is this year's <laughs> ones. That's what I'm talking about, multiple microwaves. Yeah, yeah cause you know, you only get a half an hour for lunch, you always stand there waiting for a microwave, you know? Stand in line waiting for four people to microwave your stuff. Right. We used to have six. Some, some of them must have broke them. Some basket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that too. Joey Bellagio would like the yeah, Taco yeah, Bell. Like Anybody want something to drink? I'm sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Help yourself. Oh, Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. I only have had a Mountain Dew since we left Georgia. <laughs> wow. You think you're I'm good. No, I'm good. Hydrating all day. You've been hydrating? Mm -hmm. Torch well, Mountain Dew. Well, that's kind of cool. I got a missile or something. Oh, it's so cool. It's beautiful because I'm from Florida, so everything seems like a million degrees. So I get here and it's nice. And now that's hot. So yeah, this is our this is our office break room. Uh, I can show you the torque storm. Torque storm put together room. Twins. Twins on the Cobra. Outside of 61 Sunliner for uh, uh, Street Rider magazine. They did that a few years ago. You can hold somebody's torque storm like you're saying. Okay, so this is uh, this man. Is where all the magic. Who's happens. got a Hemi supercharger about to go out? <laughs> So I can well, take, so I can hold it first. Yeah. <laughs> no 
belts for days, huh? Yeah, and then we got a we got a coyote here that's gonna go in this farm here, and we'll start or building. So this is all our spare parts. Okay? Crank pulleys and stuff? Not really spare parts, they're just they're actually just <coughs> stock items. We didn't have enough room back in that one room, so we took this one over. We used to put cars in here, and now we can't. <laughs> well, all of these boxes are blowers. Pulleys? Yeah. Got your pulleys, boys. Now that's literally the definition of pulley down, boys. Look at all them pulleys. Pulleys for days. Oh, and that's where the magic is, all the little Torque Storm boxes. Torque Storm boxes, boys. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Torque Storm boxes going out. Oh, yeah. I know there's some Hemi superchargers in there somewhere, boy. Pop that open. Todd, Todd's very particular. Oh, this must be the inventor <laughs> inventor room. No, this, this is, is where put together room. Put yeah. together room. This is where they go from the brand new and the repairs get done out there. But yeah, Todd, since we brought Todd on, our supercharger is way better than it's ever been. The tolerances and everything are even tighter than they were before. And he's did a really good job of. Got some snails, snails on the shelf. Those are made in Spring Lake, Michigan. We, uh, we actually don't make that. And then those clamps, those are from uh, Clamp Co. in Ohio. So we, we even try to, we try to get all this stuff American if we can. Yep. So we got some dealers who stock here, they're stocking dealers, and that, that's done stuff that they're stocking for them. Mm -hmm. Street, 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 no, what did they Street, 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 Oh, we found another secret room inside Torque Storm. We got some more displays over here. And it's not a Hemi, but it's a Fox body. And I think everybody kind of respects the old Fox body. So they got a little project going on in here with the old Fox body, it looks like. Definitely pretty cool, guys. This was awesome to be able to come up here and actually see how they build the supercharger and really what all goes into it and guys no lie this thing is starting off life as a block of material metal billet and they are machining it they're turning it right now inside the shop in those machines you can you can you can literally hear them out there getting made and then they turn into this stuff out here actual parts brackets pulleys crank pulleys all of it blow off valves the supercharger head unit the whole entire thing is getting built right here so we had uh we, we always when customers and stuff would come we were like talking into them in uh in this lobby it wasn't much of a lobby it was more like an entryway mm -hmm. to our building and the secretary's office was right there and we'd be talking to new customers and stuff and a friend of mine who manages hospitals he's like you you gotta fix that he's like talking to your customers and in, in your in your yeah. secretary's office like well we don't have anywhere to go you know so we, we actually have a conference room now <laughs> it's like so this all used to be one great big giant room and then we when we came here we built all this and uh, cool. yeah how many well, employees do you have now uh there's 20 of us this is 
This is Beardsley's office. <laughs> these are these are mine and Scott's offices. Kind of messy, like I said. I wasn't planning on show and tell. But. And then it's, Scott's got some really cool pictures on his walls and stuff of his other cars that he built and stuff. He broke that compass. Did a like a number of restoration uh -huh. build on it. Yeah. And he's got, you know, other cars that he's had. Mm -hmm. uh, Chevelle wagon. Impala yeah. wagon. That had twin. I never got a super trigger, I don't think. I can't remember. And this one had twins on a small block. That really ran real awesome. But, um, but yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Who does Showing those cog pulleys. <laughs> People be calling out, man, I know you got cog pulleys. We tried oh. it, and it really didn't help us. It actually, puts a lot of load on the supercharger. It's Does not it? necessary, so we got away from that. <clears throat> Probably sounds cool. It does. It does. <laughs> but there's, <laughs> enough, <laughs> there's enough noise going on with all mm -hmm. of it, you know. But, but yeah, Carco. That's uh, that's my old car. I sold. Oh, nice. That was a one of one. Oh, you got rid of that car? Yeah, I did. I didn't know that. Yeah. What What was it that was? Uh, it was a Downs Custom Performance body, and that body they debuted in '14 at SEMA, uh -huh. and nobody wanted to buy it because they were a bunch of Chevy guys building a Mopar body, and they had like a '69 Camaro dash in it, uh, and, so. and just stuff like that. And you're like, what is this? You're yeah. not gonna sell that to a Mopar guy. Yeah. Well, except for me. Yeah. And he was asking me when he was doing it, I'm like, man, that'd be cool with a 6'4 in it with a six speed. Well, he goes in, he buys a 6'4 and he gets a six speed. You know, he has all the stuff that I would have done if I was building it. They couldn't sell it. So I'm like, I'll buy it from you. So I got it for, uh, I bought everything he had. And I, I got it for a pretty good price, but I had to do a, a ton of work. Yeah. It was on a Art Morris Max G chassis. Oh, nice. Yeah. But it was uh, for a Camaro. Oh, well, same wheelbase. Probably, yeah, that was it. You know, so the engine didn't fit in the chassis. Nothing, uh, you know, it was just one thing. It's a nightmare. But we got it all together. I raced it for a couple of years, and and then uh, I sold it to start my next project. Which I don't have a picture of that, but I got a '67 Barracuda fastback that I'm oh, cool. building. It's going to have an Arrington 426 in it with twins on it. So. Probably be 1,200 horse. Also, <coughs> you know, you're racing a Camaro now. You, you yeah. seem like you're pretty non-denominational. You know? I'm. I race a Camaro because I can't have that on video. <laughs> I, I race. A, I'd put a Hemi in that Camaro in a second. But I can't. I don't want to crossbreed. So what I, you're saying is I don't you're want to Hemi tick off a whole, guy. I am a Hemi guy. I would never want. That's to what tick I'm hearing off a here. Whole brand. Yeah. Sure. You know, that's the thing. Like people are like, oh, you should put an LS in that Mustang. I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna do it. Piss saw all the Ford guys off. Yeah. I'm like that's just dumb. Yeah, so. you're here to make money, not right. Lose customers. Right. Right. Yeah, makes sense. So I mean, if I had my <laughs> brothers, I'd have a '67 Dart. It's like the Camaro with a Hemi in it. That's what I'd be racing. But that I mean, '69 Camaro. You ask ten people, and nine of people are gonna say, oh yeah, that's my favorite car. You know. Mm -hmm. So it's like. That car came available. It's a really nice car, and it's like, man, we should probably. It is a it. pretty car. It's, yeah, and it's and it's an awesome chassis. It's fast. Yeah. And um, but yeah, so it's like one of those things. You know, all right, gotta put my little part away a little bit, and we'll just <laughs> go with this. And, yeah. But, that's all right. But yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm a Mopar guy too, kind of. I won't hold it against you. But, oh, I don't. I don't hold it against. I I like whooping on Chevy guys. Yeah. But, that's my favorite thing, actually. We go to because I autocross. <coughs> I love beating up on the Corvettes. You know, it. we're talking next year. We're gonna have an autocross in Orlando. I see that. So. I don't have a Ford with it that I could race. I guess I can fix that problem. But, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. But I'm gonna be. A, I'm if I get. I got a Challenger coming. If it comes in time, I'm probably gonna race at it. No party, but mm -hmm. I don't know if. Uh, when it comes, if I have time to get a blower on it or not before I get there, hopefully I can. There's so much happening now. The industry is so alive. It's yeah. really, it's, it's, it's awesome. quite amazing. 